Everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove. Hey, everybody! It's a off broadcast, a special broadcast with my musical brother that's joining us. You just heard his voice killing it with the legendary and iconic rock group Sticks. You know what? I've known the band for eons. Todd Zuckerman, the drummer, has been a friend of mine since the um, early, um, I would say, probably the early '90s. And uh, the gentleman I'll be talking to you right now is the man who fronts this crazy band. And so without further ado, I'm proud and privileged to welcome, with open arms and open ears, Mr. Lawrence Gowan. Lawrence, welcome to Jackie's Groove, brother. Ah, great to be on Jackie's Groove. How are you? Hey, man, you know what? We always see each other at various shows with sticks. We're always running around, and George is yelling at everybody backstage. you got five minutes to get on the bus. <laughs> and uh, But it's actually a great time to get a chance to sit down and tell you, man, I'm a fan. I've been a fan of yours since you walked on stage, and and uh, yeah. just kind of wanted to let the audience out there know that... Uh, you guys are currently out on the road, but again, when aren't you out on the road? Yes, exactly. We should really, that, that should be our itinerary, Jackie, is, is the, the days that we're not on the road, because they're, they're very few and far between. Uh, but that's because we love it. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, there's that, <laughs> there's that backstage moment. Todd always has a, a great uh, little entourage of, of, of friends that he has around uh, around the world, really. So um I'm glad that we've met in the past before and that you've enjoyed the shows uh, so much. And always will, my brother. You know, and, and let's let's talk about Mr. Lawrence Gowan, born in Glasgow, Scotland, back in, I won't even give your age away, but back in the wee <laughs> days, my friend. When, when, did you, uh, when did you make your pilgrimage um, to the beautiful country of Canada? Ah, my pilgrimage was a, was a forced pilgrimage, Jackie. It was against my will. <laughs> I, I My parents dragged me to Canada. <laughs> Apparently, I cried all the way. Kicking and um, screaming. When I, when I was, yeah, exactly. 
but I, but there wasn't really much kicking and screaming because I was I was just a little kid at the time. It was probably really annoying to the other people on the plane. But uh, yeah, I came when I was a little kid and uh, grew up in Toronto, and so I'm I'm the lone foreigner in, in sticks and the uh, and and very you know happy to be. And I, I grew up in Toronto, and I had I had uh, a lot of success as a solo artist right, right. Uh, in the years prior to me joining Sticks. And uh, that's that's really that, that's really my story in, in in less than thirty seconds. You know, and you you are still um, Galwin is still you know uh, gamefully employed up there. I know Todd is always yeah. uh, posting on Facebook that he's going to be joining you for the weekend. Yeah. How how it, 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 to me? I never even talked to Todd about this. How. Different it would be being on the mass stages worldwide with sticks. You up there with yeah. that crazy um, three sixty degree um, yeah. keyboard apparatus, which I love, uh, <laughs> and uh, just no, nothing more exciting than watching Lawrence play his keyboard with his left leg like Jerry Lee Lewis. It's a uh, it, it's it's a show, and that little sticks the, the 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 lit logo on the keyboard. I thought that was brilliant. Whoever came up with that uh, that uh, uh, that machine. Deserves credit yeah. all the way around. So, with that said, yeah. let me ask you a question. So, you're on stage with Sticks. You're up there. You're killing it, as you always do. I mean, you've uh, been in Sticks since 1999. I can't believe it's been that long since you joined the boys. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, close, close. Yeah. You know, and I think it's actually very cool watching you guys on stage. I'm always curious to find out will you know will uh, Mr. Barnazzo be joining you? You know, is he now being a regular member of the group back in, or does he come and go when he wants? <laughs> He, it really, you know, Chuck wrote a book a few years back uh, called The Grand Illusion, and, and uh, it really is an expose of his of his life as a musician, but also the fact that he is living with the AIDS and has been now for right. over a couple of decades. And he uh, he has found a way to thrive and to to survive and and to overcome. It, it, it basically, Chuck now lives. Fairly similar, I guess. I'd make a loose analogy to someone who's like a diabetic who's learned to to manage his, his uh, the, this you know horrible um, yeah. sickness that, uh, that that he has to live alongside, and yet he he triumphs over it. And when he's feeling physically able and capable, and that's more and more days every year, uh, then he joins us on stage for three or four songs. Uh, and I think this year, out of you know, probably I. I I think last year, actually, let me go to that one. We did 116 stick shows last year. I think Chuck was on stage with us for over 40 of those shows. So he's he's closing in on nearly half the shows that he's able to show up for. So, um, yeah, we always look forward to when he's there. And when he's not there physically, he's he's still very much a, 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 a piece of, of what's on that stage every single night. He, he'll always be my brother. We'll always call him Thor for everything that he's uh, overcome and, and, uh, yeah. you know, everybody should be uh, that much in shape and how he is. You know, but and God bless him, man. We all have our crosses that we carry. And, uh, yeah. you know, as my mama always said to us, if it does not health related, it's all bullshit. So, you know, you have to be thankful every day <laughs> you wake up. Hey, so let me ask you a question. Lawrence, where are you right now in the world? Where is Lawrence? I am in Dodge City, Kansas, where we are playing tonight. And sure, uh, howdy. We've got it. We got a good. We got a good week of of shows coming up here. We're here tonight, and then a couple couple more. We're making our way to Colorado because we're playing with the uh, the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Beautiful uh, at Red Rocks on Sunday. And so that's that's something we're very much looking forward to. But we've got three shows leading up to that, and that's uh, that's that's just our life and how it uh, and how it unfolds year after year. And people just keep coming out in in, in greater and greater numbers, and that's. Uh, it's a great way to live, but we are definitely, we do have red rocks in our, in our sights here. Hey, Lawrence, let me ask you this question, brother. You know, being a musician myself, you know, but when you're on a stage like Red Rocks, we've all had, you know, not all had the pleasure of being there, but being an open arena, being an outdoor arena like that, when you're up there with sticks, I know you guys are in-air monitored. I don't think you guys are using wedges, or at least on this venue, you're not going to be using wedges. No. Um, with, no. the, with an or, uh, orchestra behind you, what is in Lawrence's uh, mix? What are you listening to? Yeah, that, very good question, Jackie. I, I, for the most part, I'm listening to us, you know, the, uh, the band, you know, mm -hmm. less than le, less than I am to the orchestra. I my, I do have one eye, and as you mentioned, because I have my spinning keyboard, I can I can kind of change my vantage point, right? Uh, depending depending on what's going on musically at that moment, and I do have one eye on the conductor. Uh, for some pieces of uh, within any given song, though, I'll suddenly 
uh, you know, it, it find a, a, a moment where I can pop one of my in-ear monitors out mm-hmm. and hear the orchestra and band simultaneously. So that'll happen in, in various sections of the song. Where we're hitting our three-part harmonies in a lot of the choruses of the songs, those, those I have to really stay yeah. locked and right. block everything out except for J.Y. and Tommy's voice and sometimes Ricky, just to kind of lock into those things and don't let anything else distract me from that because that's that's the block and of, of harmony that uh, mm-hmm. is a signature sound of the band so i really i vary it as the night goes through there's a middle a couple of middle sections now in an orchestral show where we drop where the band completely drops out and we'll have our monitor mixer evan um just crank the orchestra for right. that for that section so that we can follow them and you know, keep the meter together, and then we kick back in, and the band takes over again, and, and he's got to flip everybody's mix, basically at the push of a button. So it, it is quite complex when we're playing with the uh, with a symphony, and and you do have to kind of keep your eye, uh, keep, keep several kind of plates spinning at one time, so to speak, uh, sonically, well, you... and 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 keep it all together. It works, brother, because you know I I know the standardized stage plot from Sticks. You guys have had that um, pretty much laid yeah. out there. Your stage yep. right, you know, for those all looking yep. at the audience, you're on the left. Um, with the yep. or the orchestra like this, um, is it going to be? Um, will they be on a riser behind Todd? I that believe you know so. Of? I believe okay. that's the that, yeah. I believe I believe that's the setup. That's that's the best setup that we had. We did one with the Nashville Symphony uh, just a couple of months ago, and that's exactly how they were set up. They're right behind Todd. Todd, we have to do more isolation on the drums. Uh, or as much as we can. So, so it, it's a, it's a bit of a pain that they do have to put the glass kind of shields up just to try to give it a little bit of isolation and so that the drums aren't uh, Lawrence, bleeding too st- badly into it. Stay tuned. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on oh. InterTalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit MoesGuitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E Guitars.com. 619-698-1185. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. 
Ready to get your groove on? Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Hey everybody, welcome back to the second segment of Jackie's Groove. This is Jackie Bertoni, brought to you by the Intertalk Radio Network, and I'm going to cut right to the chase, man. Let's get back on the line right now with Mr. Lawrence Gowan. Lawrence, I do want to apologize, brother. You know, we normally do a two-hour interview. A little of Miss Amanda yeah. Kagan um, thought it apropos to do a half-hour interview, so we had to redo our whole system, and this is the beauty of live radio, so I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Usually, no, I, give you, I, give you a, I give you a bump out, and, uh, and so... Uh, it is, but it is. So let's get back on. I mean, how do you curtail, a, let alone a, a huge career of yours in two hours, let alone a half hour? So let's do our best. Yeah. So when we left off, right. we're talking about the uh, the vibe over at Red Rocks, which is an amazing situation with the orchestra coming up um, yeah. uh, with Sticks. Hey, let me ask you a question because, I mean, the, the, the multitude of people listening right now who are huge fans of Sticks and Mr. Gowan. But let me ask you this question, fair or unfair? Out of all the songs that you have on your repertoire, especially when you're doing a solo sticks tour, not a uh, not a split bill or a tri bill, is there right. a song that is cut from the set that I don't want to use the word upset you, but you were really looking forward to it? Because I know the set is different every time you guys go on stage. What song don't you play that you really miss playing if it's not in the set list? <laughs> How's that? I'll, I'll make the, I'll make this really self serving actually. Please. There's a song that I had in my in my solo career called uh, called A Criminal Mind, Love and uh, we when I first joined Sticks, and that's like we're coming up on 18 years ago now. It, it's funny because as I prepared a few Sticks songs for us to sing together, Tommy Shaw stopped me and said, "No, no, no, don't play a Sticks song. Play play A Criminal Mind." Cool. <laughs> this is you know our first time together. And I started playing, and he picked up a mandolin and kind of played along. And then by the end of it, he said, okay, we got to make that a stick song. So whenever we do get a chance to play it, and it's usually, you know, if we're in Canada, obviously we, we play it every time. But right. we were just in uh, in Buffalo, New York, and we played it there because it's a border city, and they, they know that they're very familiar with the song. And, and it went over really well. You know, this is a great sticks version of it. Uh, it sounds much more like the band than, than from my solo days. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I I wish we could play it all the time because we really do a great version of it. And um, but you see, as JY says, there's such a there's such an embarrassment of riches when it comes to choices of great stick songs to play. Believe me, there there are nights there are nights we have to leave out, say a song like Crystal Ball, and I feel like oh no, we can't not play that one. But there there could be a time constraint if we're uh, you know of if tour of us and like last year is us and Def Leppard and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, foreigner, so you know you've you've got to you've got to cut something, but it's always very painful when you look at the when you look at the the, the song list and and realize that, that on some nights you won't get a chance to play. Uh, I can choose another one here. It would be like um, pieces of eight. I think that's a really tremendous piece that we whenever it's included in the show. So it's you know it's it, it's just how it goes. But um, you know I, it, on, it, it, on any on any given night, it's 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 usually a good concoction and a good menu of songs that we're playing. Uh, any night anyway let me ask you a question over too because uh, you know i'm sitting here I'm, I'm always talking to todd via uh our text thing right here itself like when todd started yeah. laughing at me last week he said how in god's name are you going to even get a, a flow out of uh lawrence and a half hour let alone uh, a full <laughs> show so with that said i'm going to go above this because you know uh, now that we've got uh amanda as a friend now and i've got don felder getting ready to come on uh too but Great. let me tell you the whole vibe of us is a two-hour interview it sounds like a long interview but lawrence let me just tell you it goes by at rocket ship speed and at the end of the interview everybody says my god jackie we've got another five hours and you and i have such a cool rapport right now at least that's what the listeners are saying to right now i'm going to ask you the question is as we go down maybe a few months i want to have you come back to a, a do a do a full two-hour uh interview when you guys are off the road you can sit back have a cocktail and uh, I'd love to yeah. be able to chop it up. So I want to leave an open open door policy to you because uh, uh, okay. there's no way we're gonna no way we're gonna touch on everything. So, uh, so with that That's said, great. there's the invitation. And uh, but let me ask you this question. Thank here's you. An un- here's another unfair question, okay. not by me, but by the choice of the listeners. Sure. You came you came in in 1999. You took over the shoes of mm. Mr. Dennis DeYoung. Mm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go there, and yeah. uh, not not yeah. because I wanted to. 
How much no, animosity? Okay, but how much animosity? Yeah. How much animosity from the sticks fans out there? Because my dear <clears throat> friend of mine is Michael McDonald. Michael and I are friends for years. You know, Michael took a rash of shit from everybody when he took over. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Johnson's uh, uh, lead vocals, and they said they accused Michael of killing the Doobie Brothers. You know, right. and making it a pop group, not a rock group, which is all bullshit anyway. Right. So he's already proven right, that evident. Yeah. You walk into <laughs> Dennis DeYoung's shoes, but you didn't walk into his shoes. You just walked into a whole different vibe all the way around. You weren't you weren't hired to be a Dennis DeYoung sound alike because you don't no. sound like Dennis, and that's the beautiful thing no. about it. How long did it take the audience, or are there still members out there that refuse to accept Lawrence Gowan? Or have you been in it long enough that you are Dennis DeYoung in the eyes of everybody else? Well, no, because I, I, I don't believe that anyone can ever replace anyone in a band. I don't believe in the Agreed. word replace when it comes to a band. It just isn't possible. I, I look at it like, first of all, stick, the sticks that people see today on stage – is 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 very different from the sticks that they saw in the in the during their first five albums. Absolutely. But, you know, in the first five albums, Tommy Shaw wasn't even in, in the band. They had John mm-hmm. Serluski on guitar, and he made great contributions. Obviously, Dennis DeYoung made 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 giant contributions to the band during his time with the group. Right. Uh, but also, so did John Panazzo, uh, the drummer that preceded Todd. Right. And uh, so. These are these are people who have been part of the band, and then I even add in Glenn Burtnick, who was in for the first five years that I was in the band. And so I I see us as the culmination. In total, there are eleven people that have ever been members of Sticks, mm-hmm. and for a band to have been around for nearly you know into its fifth decade of existence, that's a very low number. But still, I, I see us as the culmination of the efforts of all those eleven people. Uh, it has amassed to what it is on stage today, and has been for the last right. well, ever since Ricky Phillips joined, uh, ever you know, which is over ten years ago now, um, well over. And uh, so, so there's that. Then, of course, I look at I, I look at my myself as a fan of rock music, and how how upsetting it can be when a when a member of the band, a particular you know a, a front member, is changed, especially when it's a band that I've loved. For, right. for years, and I'm like, oh no, no, they can't do this. Exactly. I remember, I remember, I remember the horrible trepidation I had when I when I heard that oh Peter Gabriel's not going to be in, in Genesis anymore. Right. How could they possibly continue on without him? How that just doesn't seem possible. And then a friend of mine said, hey, I got I got the Trick of the Tail album, and it's really kind of great. It's it's their drummer singing now. And he, and then he got a ticket to the show, and I was like, I I, do, I really don't want to even see Genesis without Gabriel. And then I went to the show and saw this the drummer who I finally learned his name was Phil Collins. Right. He was singing, and it didn't he didn't sound like Peter Gabriel. He didn't act like Peter Gabriel, and yet he was singing the Gabriel songs. And I found myself enjoying it not more, but not less either. I was equally as entertained. And then I suddenly got into all the Gabriel solo stuff which never would have existed if he weren't part of, if he had still remained part of Genesis so so in my own life I had that to kind of draw upon and when I walked into the room the first time with JY and Tommy I thought you know if if they ask me to do any any sort of impression or, or sound sound alike thing I, I, I'm gonna have to leave because there's no way I can't right. do that because it's just not in me I, I have there's my voice there's my style of doing things and not once I can tell you, from from the first moment we got together, was it ever even hinted at that I try to sound like, act like, or in any way be like, um, like like Dennis? Because he is who he is. He's a unique yeah, person who made a tremendous contribution to the band when he was part of it, and and he'll like I say with all eleven of those men, they're all part of it. You know, they, we are we are the culmination of all those efforts. And, and Lawrence, uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm going to jump in right now because you're going to hear that music, and this is yeah. the unfair part ah, to the listeners sure out there. Right. We're going to get back. We're at 20 seconds. We're out. Everybody, do yourselves a favor. Sign on to www.sticksworld.com uh, to follow the boys on tour. And real quick, your URL, Larry? I uh, my oh, it's just uh, you can go to Gowan Facebook, uh, Gowan Official. Perfect. Or just Gowan, G O W A N, is is a good way to. Brother, find I'm stuff. sending I'm sending love and blessings to you, man. Peace through music. I'll get back on touch with Amanda. We're gonna get back for a full interview. Yeah. So, guys, patronize this man, Lawrence Gowan, lead singer, keyboardist from the iconic rock group Sticks. God bless you, brother. Safe travels. Knock him dead as always. 
Great to talk to you, Jackie. Thanks. We'll, Blessings, we'll pick brother. it up again. Peace. Cheers. Are you serious Bye about now. your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson. And when it comes to strategic PR, branding and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.